Don't we often teach children that gimme gimme never gets when we're teaching them manners? It's an important lesson for many when they're writing classroom grants too. One of the biggest problems that I see with grants for the classroom is what I call the gimme grants. This is a grant that is so focused on the technology or item that is being requested that there is no clear curricular or learning need for the classroom request. The grant does not include details and is often padded to get the most for the classroom or reach the top level of request possible. I hear from grant funders that this is an especially big problem with iPads. For example, a teacher will ask for one or a class set of iPads for their classroom, but really have no plan for using them. I want you to look at two scenarios for such a request and help identify which is the gimme request, which will likely not be funded. If we look at these two different requests that came from two different teachers, let's compare them. The first request is for a classroom set of iPads, 25 iPads for 23 students. The second request is 12 iPads for 25 students. Uh, the additional request from each teacher is 500 for app purchasing from the first teacher. For the second teacher, she wants 250 for specific reading and math apps that she has named that she will purchase through the VPP, which is the Value Purchase Program, for a 50% discount. Then she also explains that she'll be using iMovie, GarageBand, and other apps that are provided for free on the iPad. So how often will the technology be used? The first teacher says, I'll use it all the time. The second teacher says, I'll use it a minimum of three days a week, one day for literacy, personalized instruction, one day for math personalized instruction, and one day for problem solving and coding enrichment. Each time will be about 30 to 45 minutes. Additional times for writing and project creation as possible. When they ask what content areas they'll be using the technology in, the first teacher says all of them. The second says reading, math, art for creative projects and problem solving tasks. So when asked the question, what will this replace? What else have you tried already in your classroom? The first teacher doesn't give an answer. The second teacher says it will replace paper worksheets that I provide students. It will also be more engaging and allow us to save copies and paper. Finally, the rationale. The first teacher says, I think it's important for my students to use technology and have exposure to things like iPads in the classroom. The second teacher says, it's important for my students to use technology and its novelty will also help me to encourage important skills like collaboration and using electronic files. Working together is an important skill for my students to develop. Most importantly, I have students of varying abilities and having iPads available to me can allow me to individualize instruction and allow for extra practice or extra challenge for students who need it using specific apps I have requested during our center times. The devil is in the details. The first teacher may have some great ideas about how she will use the iPads, but she has not given those details. In addition, she padded her request, asking for general apps and ordering more iPads than she has students. This will immediately be placed by many into the unfunded pile. Things to take from this comparison. One, be specific. Let possible funders know that you have planned out clear use of the items you are requesting. Two, even if it's not asked for, explain how you will use it and how often it will be used. They are more likely to fund something with regular classroom use. Three, show that you're making good use of the money you are requesting. Do not pad your request, but offer real expenses. Four, talk about how this resource in your classroom will let you do something better or new or make better use of existing resources. Five, Share how you have tried to do this task in another way and how this purchase will benefit the learners. Six, make sure to talk about your classroom goals and learning objectives throughout your request. Show that you know about teaching and learning and that they know they are investing in the right person. Seven, make sure to avoid jargon. Looking at these requests, you can easily understand what the detailed teacher is talking about. She shows professionalism without using a bunch of education-related terminology. Here's a great test. Give the grant request you're working on to a friend or family member who is a non-educator. Ask them to repeat back to you what you are requesting and why. If they can't do it, you might be at risk of a gimme grant. If you find this is the case, go back and focus on your teaching and learning goals and how it will fit in the curriculum. Be clear about these areas and give more details. Ask someone to read it again and continue this process until your communication is clear to a new reader.